Hi there, my name is James. In this video, I'm going to give you a basic overview of Stump Window Manager. Stump WM is a manual tiling window manager written in Common Lisp. I'm running Stump WM on Ubuntu, but you can run it on any Linux distribution or Unix like operating system that uses Xorg or the X11 windowing system. It's important to note that Stump won't run on Wayland. What makes Stump Window Manager interesting is that it is extremely hackable and customizable through its common list configuration. Stump WM's predecessor was Rat Poison, which was written in C, and it borrows a lot of ideas from that, and also from GNU Screen and Emacs. So the first thing you see on the Stump Window Manager screen is the startup message, and messages are how Stump Window Manager communicates with you. If I try to go to the next window and there are no windows open, it will give me a message saying no other window. The default Stump Window Manager session out of the box just contains a black screen and a cursor, so there's not much to see. So I've customized Stump so that you can see things more clearly. I've set a wallpaper using FE or FEH and I've configured a mode line at the top. It's like a bar in other tiling window managers. It displays my groups or workspaces up here. You can see the currently selected group. And on the right hand side I've got the time and the battery percentage. You can add other modules here from the Stump Contrib repository. Or you could also write your own functions to display information up here. You could also use a third party application such as Polybar if you didn't want to use the Stump mode line. Stump Window Manager works the same as the default Emacs key bindings. It uses a prefix key. The prefix key is Control T by default, but I've remapped mine to Control Z or Control Z as I'll refer to it. So prefix key is like a sequence. So first of all, I press Control and Z. And you will see the cursor has changed to a square. This tells you that the prefix key has been activated. So the next thing I'm going to type is the question mark and this completes the sequence and you will see the stump help map appear. You can see the prefix key is listed there as control Z because I've changed it in my configuration. On the left hand side are the key bindings and on the right side are the commands that the key is bound to. So you'd execute any command by pressing the prefix key and then just one key or you can see sequences as well. So it could be a multi-key combination. Stump commands are like interactive functions in Emacs and you can write your own commands. You can define them in your stump configuration using the def command keyword. It should be noted that the help map does not display all the commands. If you want a full list of commands, you would use the colon command, which is bound to a semicolon. So I have to be careful when I type that. So I'm going to type prefix key and you can see the cursor has changed to a square and semicolon. You will see an input window has appeared. It's called an input bar and the colon window itself is called a command prompt. And I can start to type here and you'll notice that there is a completion system. So I can type the full command that I'm looking for or I can use the tab key to tab through the options. I'm looking for commands so when I get to that I can press return. This gives you a full list of stump commands here. They're mostly the default stump commands, but there are some that I've written called start swank, stop swank, stump screenshot, and toggle scratch pad. If I go back to the help, there's another command there called exec, which executes a shell command. So if I type prefix key and exclamation mark, I can launch programs from here. So if I type Inkscape or Firefox or URXVT for my terminal, 
I can hit tab and hit return and it opens a terminal window. I can kill that window by pressing prefix key and K. Back to the help again. I can also run commands through the colon window. So if I type prefix key and V for version, you will see a message saying what version of Stump I'm using and when I last compiled it, it'll show the date and time. I could go to the colon window and type version in there and I'll get the same thing. So you can execute any command through the colon window or you can set it up so that when you press a key it'll execute the command. So I can launch applications using keyboard shortcuts as well. I can use prefix key and E for Emacs, prefix key and B for Firefox and prefix key and C for a URXVT terminal. The C would stand for console and B for browser. So I'm just going to start off by opening up four terminals. I'm going to populate them with some information as well. So you will see that the windows all stack on top of each other. This is because Stump is a manual tiler. I can cycle through the windows using prefix key and N for next prefix key and P for previous. I could also use super and left and right arrow. And that's because Stump has something called a top map, which means I can define shorter keyboard shortcuts that way. I don't have to use the prefix key either. So you can define a command with two keys or even one key. So I can press my print screen button and have it take a screenshot and you'll see a message appear there. So because Stump is a manual tiler, it sits all the windows in one frame. So right now I've got four windows in one frame. So using the help, I'd have to do a split in the one frame. I can either do a vertical split or a horizontal split. I've changed the default um, stump configuration splits because a horizontal split in stump is a split down the middle of the screen here and a vertical split is a split across the screen. So I've reversed these commands but I've also reversed the keys so you should get the same functionality in the default stump. So if I was to press prefix key and uppercase s I will get a vertical split. I can select the frame by pressing prefix key and right arrow and left arrow. You'll see when the frame is selected there's a white border around it. I can press prefix key and O or prefix key and tab to move to the next frame. I can I have to select the next frame that I want to split so if I want to split the right frame I have to select it and I can press prefix key and S to do a horizontal split. I can also use prefix key and tab and move to the next frame. I can also split again. And you'll see now that I have more frames than windows. So I have five frames and four windows. So I have a blank frame down here. If I opened up a new window it would appear in there. There's only so many splits you can do before Stump tells you that you've ran out of splits. So I can undo splits by pressing prefix key and uppercase R, which is like an undo split history. So you'll see there I'm back to three frames. So you might be wondering how to view term four now. Well, I can view it in any frame. So if I press prefix key and N, you'll see it there. Prefix key and N and it also displays there and prefix key and N and it will display there as well. So Stump Window Manager manages windows a bit differently than most uh, regular tiling window managers. If I open the help you will see there are some maps there that have an asterisk around them. You need to press prefix key and X but you need to add the question mark as well so if I press prefix key X and question mark, I get an exchange window map appear. 
so there's arrow commands there so if i press prefix key x and my right arrow you will see term one and two have swapped so i can press prefix key x and my left arrow to swap them back again i can also prefix key and f11 to full size term one or full screen it i can press prefix key and f11 to put it back I can actually float the window as well. So if I open the command prompt or the colon prompt with prefix key and semicolon, I can go float this. You will see that the border has changed to an orange color. So I can left click and drag the window. I can right click and resize it. Left click and drag it back. And I can position it around the screen with the mouse. I can unfloat that using the unfloat command or unfloat this command so you would see that it has been put back into the frame again. So there's another interesting command called I resize so if I press prefix key and lowercase or you will see a message saying I resize started. I can use my left and right arrow keys to change the widths of the splits. So if I want roughly 60 to 70% of a split, I could press return and I resize is finished. If I want to save that layout, I can go to the command prompt. There is a dump group um, command. So if I go to dump group, I can save a file called foo and it tells me that the group is dumped. I can press prefix key and uppercase Q to destroy all the splits. And now I can go back to the command prompt and type restore and foo is what we call the file. So you can now see that the previous frame configuration has been restored and the left frame takes up roughly 60% of the screen. So Stump Window Manager uses workspaces or groups. You can define your groups in your stump configuration and you can see the groups up at the top. You can access the group map by typing prefix key lowercase g and question mark. So I'll just type prefix key G and question mark. You can see commands such as G next and G prev, which would send you to the next and previous groups. So you can remap these to something shorter if you want. So I can press prefix G N to go to the next group. And it goes to a second workspace I've called extra. There's two types of groups or workspaces. There is a tiling group, but there's also a floating group. In the tiling group, you can tile windows and you can also float them. But in the float group, you can only float windows. So if I go prefix key lowercase g n, I'm now in the floating group. So in the floating group, I can open up two terminals using prefix key and enter. And I can just select them and... I can overlap them. I can move them with the left click of the mouse and right click resizes. You need to click up on the, the border or it won't work. Uh, so you need to, you can set this the border size in your configuration. So you probably want to set it a nice size so that you can select each window. I can add a new group on the fly. So if I just go to prefix key and semicolon from my command window, I can type G new. So I can add new groups or workspaces by typing G new and a new name, G new float. That's a new float group. I can add a new group in the background. It won't switch to it if you use the BG um, command. So I'm just going to type test group. And you'll see that a new test group has launched. I can open up a terminal there as well. I'll just call that one term 5. I can delete the group again on the fly if I want. I can just go g kill and I'll just 
type the name of the group and it tells me that it's going to kill test group and it's going to move the window to the float group because that's the last group I was in so I'll just say yes and you now see that it's in the float group and I'll just resize it and you see that it it's overlapping the other windows I'm just going to close those I can move this floating window to one of the tiling workspaces or groups so I can use prefix key semicolon and I can go G move and follow and it's going to ask me what group I want to send it to. I'm going to send it to base. And you see there that it's now floating in the tiling group. I don't like that behavior. I would rather it just tiled. And it's only a few lines of code if you wanted to change that behavior. So if you wanted to put it into the tiling group, you would just go unfloat this. And you set, now see the term 5 is in the first frame here. So it wouldn't be feasible to be entering commands all the time if I wanted to move windows to groups. So I've remapped mine to prefix key and super right arrow will move term 5 into my second workspace or group. I can press prefix key and super left arrow to move it back. So in this way you can move easier than having to open up the colon prompt every time. I'm just going to kill that window. You'll notice up here that the numbers start at zero for the windows. You can change this if you want. And the groups start at one. The star symbolizes the current group. And the plus would be the previous group I was on. And you see here three would be the previous term at open which was term four and I can access that there. Stump can access windows by using the number so if I just do prefix key and three I would get the fourth window and you would see that there. If I wanted to select term three that will be number two so I could go prefix key and two and you see that's selected that window. I can also go prefix key and F2 to go to the second group workspace or group. I can go prefix key and F1 to go back to the first group. I could also access frames by numbers too by pressing prefix key and F and you'll see that uh, number two is the one that's selected so I could just press zero if I wanted to move focus from the bottom right over to the left so I'll hit zero and you see now that focus has changed to the first frame. Stump also uses something called menus so if I destroy all the splits with prefix uppercase Q and then do prefix key and the quote mark you will see I have a menu and menus are interesting because you could write your own menu to launch applications or to shut down the computer um, so I'm just going to select, for example, number one, which should give me term two. And you'll see I've got term two there. So the most exciting thing about Stump Window Manager is Swank and Slime. So I'm just going to switch to the next workspace and I'm going to open up Emacs. And I'm going to turn on Gaps, which is a feature in the Stump Contrib repository. You can find extra modules in the Stump Contrib repository that add more functionality to the default Stump. So what is Slime and Swank? Well, Slime is an Emacs mode for Common Lisp development. Swank is the back-end server part, and it's a program written in Common Lisp. Um, it listens on a socket to receive slime commands from Emacs and execute them. So I'm going to turn on Swank Server and I'm going to do that with Super and S. And this is not part of the default stump. You have to program this in. So you see that Slime or the Swank Server, sorry, is active on port 4004. I now have to connect through Emacs 
and slime and slime is also something you have to set up in your Emacs um, config so I'm going to go slime dash connect and I use meta x to access that so you see down here I've got local host at the bottom I'm going to hit return on that and I'm going to change this port number to 4004 and hit return you now see that the slime REPL has opened the REPL is REPL it stands for Redival Print Loop I'm going to switch package to Stump Window Manager and I've got it inside parentheses so you see now that I've switched package and I'm in the Stump Window, window Manager package I can issue um, stump commands from here so if I was to do a v split command surrounded in parentheses you'll now see that I've done a vertical split I could also do a horizontal split so you now see that I'm controlling my window manager from Emacs I can do only to put it back I can go to my other window in Emacs and open up a test file. I'm going to open up testfile.lisp. And I've added some code here that should just print a message. Hello, I am a test message for video demonstration purposes. Hello, viewers. I have that. I've done a define key top map super and T. So when I press super and T, I should get a message. At the moment, I'm not. And you'll see that Emacs has picked up the key binding and says it's undefined super and T. So if I switch windows in Emacs and type load test file dot lisp and hit return, I've now loaded the test file. And if I hit super and T, you'll now see that I get a message. Hello, I am a test message. So I've actually changed the behavior of Stump Window Manager without uh, recompiling or restarting the Window Manager. So I'm going to end this Stump Window Manager video here by saying active development is carried out on GitHub at this page. You can see the link up there. And you can see the source code, the Lisp files. You can also find information about the philosophy and how to build and start Stump Window Manager. There's also on the Stump Window Manager website, you can go to the documentation tab and you can go down to the Git link. There's a PDF link there and you will see the Stump Window Manager manual and you can read all about Stump Window Manager there and there's loads of information there. So I'm going to leave this video here and in the next video I might do an install from scratch. So we'll see you then. Bye.